thought I'd do a quick video. Didn't do a homebrew Wednesday this week because I didn't really have a lot of content to fill it with. Um, I was going to brew tonight um, as the missus was out, but things got late, I've got tired. Decided to have a beer, which I've just reviewed. I'll put the video up for that later. It's quite a strong one, so I think I'll just enjoy that and chill out. But I have been doing a few bits today. Um, I'll start with some freebies. I'm going to put a picture up probably at the end of this video or somewhere in there. I've got a call or a text rather in the week asking if I wanted some uh, free barrels or casks. And um, I weren't quite sure what to expect when I was going to get them. But um, they turned out to be these little, little kind of brown half uh, firkin kind of things. I believe they're called pins. Uh, they hold about 20 litres. They're like a, a very kind of heavy duty plastic. And uh, they're from a brewery that's no longer in existence. And this place was just going to throw them out. And they asked if I wanted them. So I said, yeah. And when I got there, I was surprised to find out that was the, the ones that they had. I'd seen a, the same thing that um, Chuck and the Males had when I went down there. They they ship them out to people that can't quite get through a whole barrel at certain pubs, but they will they will get through that. I think they hold 20 and a half litres. And uh, all I need to get from them really is uh, they have like a little plug in each end, They're like, uh, and one in the middle where you fill the beer, I think, which is called the shiv. And then you get keystones, and I think there's like a little pin that you hammer in to release the pressure, and then another one, and also a tap to go in the end of it, and then you chock it up on the woods and you can dispense from it. It's kind of like you've got sort of two or three days, I think, once you've you've uh, you've tapped it. I believe you can run it through. I've seen other people do it, run it through a beer engine, like the old, the Angram style beer engines, and, and I think you can put a cast breather on it and it have a little bit of CO2 running through it. It'll give you a little bit more longevity, from what I hear. But um, I posted on the forums today to find out, you know, what what people thought if they were okay using that, and it transpired that someone had, on one of the forums, uh, Jim's Beer Kit, had done a bulk order. And they were sort of selling them off for sort of like 25 quid or 23 quid a night. So to get two of them for free was quite a bargain. I've only got to get the uh, the keystones and ships and that, and they're good to go. Probably something that I'm not going to use right away. Um, obviously not being able to get through 20 litres of beer in the flat and that. But if I've got something coming up or a, or a party or something, that'd be quite a, a cool little thing to have on the side because they're just the kind of nice little size you'll see from the photo. Um, so that was one of the free things I got today. Uh, another free thing I got was uh, someone also at the start of the week um, knows a friend of a friend who, you know, goes to a, a Sam Smith pub. And they asked if I wanted any beer from there. So uh, they bought me a, a beer list of all the beers that they do. And uh, there was two on there. One they said that they'd had themselves, which was really nice, uh, which was this one, which is Yorkshire Stingo which is aged in oak casks and matured for over a year. Uh, it's 8%. It's fermented in stone Yorkshire squares at Yorkshire's oldest brewery. Um, it's quite funny actually, the bottle's 550ml. It's really strange, not 500, not 568. It's kind of in between, a bit of a strange one. But um, yeah, that's. I think that's quite an expensive one, that one, from what the person told me. I've got that one. And I also asked for a... Imperial Stout, which is 7%, and uh, I got them for free, basically. Um, well, I say I got them for free, I'm gonna, the person I got from me, I'm going to send them up some, some homebrew, kind of like a, a beer exchange, if you like, and that, which is kind of tends to be the, the way I think at the moment. I'm giving a few beers to a few people and getting something else in return. I kind of like that method of payment. Let's have a bit of this beer. So getting on to what I was, um, my main thing with brewing, um, I'm doing the brew in the bag, or I was doing the brew in the bag at the flat. My initial batch that I've done, the first one I did it was a stout. Uh, it's been in the bottle three weeks. I, I cracked a bowl last night because I had kind of like a half bottle. It doesn't seem to have carbonated very well. I don't know whether I've undercarbed it. I only, I didn't have a, or well, I didn't bother to work out the exact measurement of sugar I needed in that, and I kind of used about half a teaspoon in each bottle and thinking that it was a stout it wouldn't matter too much anyway but I don't know because they haven't been warm enough for long because normally when I do it elsewhere they're in a fridge 
uh, that's con temperature controlled so they, they kind of like they carbonate and I drop it down to clear them out and you know it's all good but being in the flat I haven't got that luxury because I kind of just put them where they fermented at a steady 20 thinking it'd be okay and chucked them in the loft and it is really cold up there so whether it's just they haven't conditioned in time and they're now too cold I might have to bring them back down but the first bottle I cracked weren't weren't up to much so I don't think it's anything to do with the brew in the bag it's probably just done the carbonated um, the second one I did was a bitter uh, with some hops that was given uh, I don't know some random golden hop they didn't they didn't have a name at the time well they still don't um, I don't know how that is yet because that's only kind of like a week in the bottle night so I'm going to leave that a bit longer but I did intend to brew a, a kind of a simple IPA or smash type beer up tonight but um, I wanted to get my new mash tun sorted because as much as I liked the brew in the bag and the concept it was quite easy with the two grain bags and that I noticed the uh, the walk prior to boiling was kind of I don't know, very murky. I seem to get a lot of crap and a little drop out at the end. You know, I, even though I used the uh, the proto flock, it was just it was just too much crap, and I kind of didn't have the same level of that when I had done a full scale all grain elsewhere. So I thought I'll just get a mash tun, cancel out the bags, have it in one pot, kind of a little bit less clean up as well because it's not got two bags to strain out and it's all in one vessel. So I got a 28 litre Thermos cooler, um, and decided to drill it out myself. I was going to drill it out last night and realised I'd lost the little screw that holds the um, the drill part for the um, my brain's gone for the hole saw, uh, so I didn't have it. But then I realised that I still had, which has turned out to be quite a useful saw when I drilled my stainless steel pots. Was uh, a thing called a Qmax cutter. I'd ordered that to. It's okay for like single skinned metal pots, and it transpires that. It's okay for plastic as well. Just basically, there's three parts. There's like a the main body, which has a screw, and that part, the cutting part. So you drill a hole big enough to go in your pot. That goes in between. You tighten up, and then you basically get an eight mil Allen key and tighten it up till that punch is what that is. Cuts a perfect hole in the pot. Or or uh, the thermos thing, which I've now cut into that. Um, the only thing with this, because it was like a double skin, there's a polystyrene in between. I've read that if you use one of them, you can pull the inner plastic towards the outer and create like a sort of a dimple, it'll just suck it in. So this actually does come apart if you get the thermos 28 litre. That, those little poppers pop out there. This white bit comes out in between, there's like a polystyrene box that goes in between. So first of all, you, you just drill your hole all the way through so that you've got a, a hole that's going to be level going all the way through, straight through the, the blue, the polystyrene and the white, and then uh, take them out and then kind of use the Qmax independently on each one. So then you've got a perfect hole running all the way through. So then I fit the tap and inside I've just used a, a bazooka filter. Now I've read on a lot of places that they collapse under the weight of the mash and that, but I'm only doing 10 litre batches, so I'm not really concerned about too much grain being on top of that. But it transpires that the home brew shop that do the Igloo 45 litre now use that instead of the false bottom. I think uh, Hammer Home Brew has the Igloo and it's got like the false bottom, the, the, the circular plate and the tube running between. They now use that because it's cheaper and they haven't had one collapse when they've been doing their tests. They do like a, uh, a demo where you can watch an all grain being done. They've not had it collapse. So, you know, it was a lot cheaper. I think all in all that's probably cost about twenty-five pounds to make. And that's done. That I mean that'll hold twenty-eight litres, you know, whatever grain up, but I'm only doing ten litre batches. Um just a thought to um relax its own brew time. Um was on about making a, a chiller a, a um mash tun. Just to say how easy it is to kind of knock up a little one really. Um, the only thing with this mash tun and a lot of people said about it is the, the heat loss through the lid. The lid is kind of really thin and it's got like, it goes in quite a bit. Well, some people drill a hole there and there and fill it up with filler foam uh, and then sort of hold it over a bin, let the filler foam cure inside and then any that's going to run out will run out. That stuff's really messy, you can get really kind of you know messy quick. But then some people say you put too much in, the lid will bulge and it won't fit on. You know, 
So I decided against that and read a few things about insulating mesh tons and that. A lot of people say one of the key thing is to not just put it straight on to wood or something like that, put it on something insulated to start with, obviously cover it up like most people do. But some people put a, a layer of tin foil on and then I've seen in like in the round mesh tons as well, they make a, they get like a, a circle of polystyrene or any kind of like insulating material. You can get that stuff that goes in loft sometimes with a silver sheet either side. They cover it in like a silver tape, reflective tape of some sort. Make sure that it's got a little handle so you can pull it out and sink that almost on top of the on the grain bed. Not so it's touching, but just enough so you've created like another insulated area so that the heat, you know, is not going to rise out because the thing is that they don't insulate the lids on cool boxes because they're not designed to have hot liquids in there, so they're never going to have a hot liquid or hot air rising up, so they don't, you know, think about that. So at my work, they often have sort of random packaging things come in on that. So this is like a, I don't know, it's like a weird kind of plasticky kind of thick insulation. I've cut exactly to size. That will fit right in there. I can push it down just enough. So it's above the grain bed just to give it an extra layer of insulation. And I've got another one to sit underneath it so that it won't lose heat from the bottom. I'm going to see how that works out. Um, I've noticed as well that due to where you have to have the flat spot on the thermos cooler and then have the um, bazooka filter in, I've put water in and it's about a two litre dead space. So I've accounted for that in Beer Smith and that. So hopefully you should have run all right. Um, I'm thinking they're probably going to do a brew day tomorrow rather than tonight now, it's just far too late. Um, other than that, I've realised that I've now reached over 200 subscribers, which is really great. I thank everyone that subscribes and watches. Um, I kind of understand, I think, that some of the, the beer review videos might be a little bit boring to some of that. It's hard to know which beers are good to review because obviously there's no point in me putting a beer review up and then finding out like five people are watching that. It's kind of a little bit like, oh, I could have just drunk that and not reviewed it. but. You can never know. I mean, I, I do like drinking the beer off camera. I like drinking it on camera. It makes you kind of think more when you're on camera because you're trying to pick out, tell things people and that, you know, sometimes you should just sit there and neck it and not really think too much about it. But uh, I think people are kind of more interested in kind of what's brewing and what you're doing with things and, you know. Um, so I'm hoping in the future I'm going to get a lot more videos of me actually doing a few beers kind of things. I've not really done too many of them. Um, I'm still going to do a lot of kits, I think. Um, I might stick more with the Cooper's kits. Um, I've still not got a satisfactory answer back from Festival with regards to the, the Razorback. So, depending on that, I don't think I might ever brew a Festival kit again other than the one that I've already got. Um, just because if they can't be bothered to at least answer me back, why should I bother to buy their product? I mean, you know, that's not customer service, is it? You know. But anyway, I think I'll probably do a lot of Cooper's kits. Um, I might even try and do the one that I gave Ben, the Hoppy Pale, because Ben really liked it, I liked it. It's a really simple recipe to do, it came out you know, quite nice, it might be a good one to show people on that. And, uh, but I don't know, people seem to like watching people brew, I mean I, I tend to watch a lot even though I know how to do it and I've done it myself, it's just, I don't know, it's quite interesting to see how other people do it, you often learn things that you don't do or, you know, who knows. Um, so. Thinking about the, the 200 subscribers, uh, thanks to everyone that does subscribe. I might run a competition. I don't know what yet or what I would give away. It'd probably be something really simple like a like and, you know, what's the name of the video or something, or comment on the video or something. Something really simple on that. I don't know what the prize would be, but um, I could think of something. I think I've got a, I've got a few things that I've gathered. So uh, maybe I could give out some glassware and some something else, some hops and some something else, but I think it would be UK only if I'm going to give out something sort of like glassified or we'll see. So, till next time, cheers.